just trying to find my glasses. Don't get any... I, you'd love that, wouldn't you? Good evening, folks. And, <laughs> welcome back, everybody. I'm Tom, and this is the simulcast. I've got a hair in my eye. On the air now for uh, December 6, 1995, live from Los Angeles, from CBS Radio and Television, Merv Griffin is here tonight, our pal who is a true pioneer in television talk, who has been entertaining America for the better part of five decades, and our friend Robert Ballard is back tonight to take us beneath the surface of the sea. He, uh, this is the man who found the Titanic, he found the Britannica, and now he has found the Lusitania, and we have some great video of this. Excuse me. And I realize, by the way, for those of you listening on radio, you'll have to imagine, and we'll try and be as descriptive as we can when this video comes up. Let me go to Prodigy Mail, because <laughs> you people do pay attention. Dear Tom, I have watched your show every now and then. The one thing I've noticed is that every Wednesday, you do that clip from the $10,000 pyramid in which Billy Crystal or somebody who looks exactly like him is going nuts because he just won the $10,000. Does that clip represent the time when Billy set the record for the fastest trip to the top at 26 seconds? Did they have only 30 seconds to reach the top? Do you have the whole clip of that bonus round from the bottom to the top of the pyramid? If so, can I see it on the air? Please show it on Wednesday so as not to break the pattern. I appreciate it very much. Thank you, Brian Saddlebrook, New Jersey. Brian? We have the entire clip, but it runs about 45 seconds to a minute. If we run the entire clip, we have to pay everybody involved, including Dick Clark and our director, Brian McAloon, royalties or residuals to run the clip on the air. Uh, we have a policy here at CBS. We feel that Dick Clark has made enough money in his life. <laughs> but anyway, here, because it's Wednesday, and just for you, my friend in New Jersey, here is Brian McAloon going nuts on the pyramid. Roll it. Billy Crystal, not at the lighthouse. <laughs> you know, my lawyer said to me many years ago, you do the news, let Johnny do the jokes. And in the main, I've respected that. I'm not a good teller of jokes, but there was one in the paper this morning that I thought was hysterical. And it's very quick, and I'm, I'm going to leap into it. A fellow goes into a car dealership to buy himself a new vehicle. And the dealer is showing him the car after he signed the bill of sale. And the guy looks at the radio, he says, by the way, he says, there are no, uh, no, 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 no push buttons on the radio, just one knob on, on and off. He says, how do you get the stations you want? He said, the dealer said, this is the most amazing radio we've ever had in this car. He said, you simply say to the radio what kind of a program you want to listen to, and the radio automatically tunes to a station featuring that. He says, go, go ahead. And he turned the radio on. He says, just tell it what you want to hear. And the guy said, classical music. And within seconds, in FM stereo surround sound is a Beethoven concerto. The guy has never heard a radio that's played like this in his entire life. He's absolutely astounded. So he's driving home, and he's trying out the radio. He says, talk, and Rush Limbaugh comes on. Uh, he says, top 40, and there, there, there's K-Star singing the Wheel of Fortune. And he says, uh, adult contemporary rock, and there is Sting doing a new cut from his, uh, his CD. And at that moment in time, a guy cuts in front of him, he screams out, idiot! And Howard Stern came on the radio. <laughs> the lawyer might have been wrong, you know. Anyway, Merv Griffin is here tonight, and Robert Ballard jump into a color teeny and watch the pictures as they fly through the air. And thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> produces things, and he's a very successful businessman. My friend, thank you for coming over, and oh, welcome back to see Thank you. I would have missed it. My, you know, one of, the, on one, one of the things that we never talked about the first time here was yeah. Merv, the businessman, and people now know that yeah. you're, you're the owner of hotels, uh, mm. you're involved in, in uh, gambling properties, uh, you own radio stations, and you own television programs. Mm -hmm. When did you get interested in this stuff uh, as you were coming up as a broadcaster? Well, I always, always interested in in the business part i'm not that good a businessman but i'll tell you i have one great ability and that is to pick people yeah pick people who come through for me in the business world and are very successful right. and i surround myself with them and they're they're good once in a while you make a mistake but not that much and all oh, the whole time i was doing shows i was buying stuff i know but i never told anybody and the, nobody ever knew it i had radio stations here and little things there because in those days, if you told that, it was like when Jackie Gleason signed his uh, Chrysler deal. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, it was the biggest deal ever. So, uh, it, and the headline said $12 million to Gleason for his new show. I remember that. 
Now, I used to walk down the street with him in New York, and all the cab drivers, hey, Jackie, you know, truck drivers, hey, uh, Jackie. But then that story came out, nobody ever yelled at him again, because you don't yell at rich people. You don't, you're exactly right. Try it, try it. Uh, no, no, oh. but I'll tell you, I was talking tonight with my makeup artist, Kelly Greer. We were talking about Milton Burrow, who was rich. on a program. Remember when Burrow signed the deal with NBC for, oh, for 30 oh, years, for five oh, grand a year, yeah. and we thought it was the most money that anybody had ever heard of in the history of the league? Yeah, in 1951. Well, I, I, that's, uh, see, that's good. But uh, what, is, what always makes me laugh is people say, well, how much do you have and, and what do you do with it? But you see, nobody know, comes ever and piles money on a desk. You don't see money. Of course not. Have you ever seen money? No. Have you ever seen your check? Uh, no, tell the truth. No, I haven't. I mean, I have in the old days, but you I don't know. Okay, it goes right to somebody. Yeah. I don't know who they yeah. are. Yeah. And I remember when I sold Wheel of Fortune and, and Jeopardy to Coca Cola. 250 million, man. And they said, What's it like, Merv? And I said, oh, I don't know. <laughs> you mean you didn't have a table with all the $10,000 no. bills? You them. never see it. Somebody says, Well, they wired it. You see it going across a little wire, you know, and into your bank. Why radio stations? Well, I started on radio. San Francisco. I was on uh, KFRC. Yeah. Love. Always love radio. And then I just recently merged with uh, Liberty Broadcasting. And uh, so now it's, it's quite a network of uh, radio stations. And the funny thing about radio is they've been trying to kill it now for 40 years. Oh, no, and it, it just won't die. Well, <laughs> no, because it goes with people <laughs> into very intimate places. You of know? all the things that you've acquired, what's the best thing you think you ever bought? That gave you the most pleasure, that you had the most fun with? Because I know you like to buy mm. things that you can have fun with. Yeah, I do. Well, you, well, you see, when you get... You mentioned the amount. I, I, I don't mention that. But what, the what, 250? Yeah. When you get that kind of money, you have a choice. You could put that into the bonds, yeah. and you would get, well, say you've got bonds and, and corporate bonds. T-bills and, and, and all that. And, it's, and, and 10%, it, so it gives you $25 million a year to live on. Well, I, I, that would be enough, I would think. Yeah, I would think you could scrape by. Or the <laughs> other option is you put it back into life and into businesses, and people go to work, and you do all that kind of stuff. And you don't retire and, and you know, become a, right. a, a vegetable. And that's what I chose to do, put it back. And I made some big mistakes. Have you ever lost money? Have you, have oh, you, yeah, have I lost some money. Bought? Yeah, but then eventually if you stick with it and roll up your sleeves while everybody else is screaming and yelling, and, ha, ha, he's losing it. You're down there, you know, in the basement, and you're getting the stuff done. Have you, have you ever been, like, in the money room of your casino at resorts? No, I'm not allowed. You're kidding. No, no, no. I mean, you, you can't go in the, no, in the no, county no, room? No, no. Mm -mm. I'm I would have to apply to the gaming board commission, yeah. permission to go into that room. Now, I can go into the security room and watch the camera on their hands. <laughs> it's not that we don't trust them. <laughs> but they have gloves, you know, and talcum powder all over. Um, but you have robberies and all that. I mean, that is uh, that's t very tough I was me. told one time by a man who went into the county, the, chain, the, the money room of the casino that they have, they have forklift trucks lifting money. Money. Yeah. That for change, it's easy because they have machines that can count quarters yeah. and half dollars. But for paper money, there's no machine that can separate uh, five, ten, no, twenty, count. fifty. Yeah. It's got to be hand counted and bailed. And it's, it's, it's just, it, it must be a cash Well, count. Resorts was the first to open in Atlanta. That's correct. We, see, we only have, we have 12 hotel casinos there. And uh, Resorts was the first. So people lined all the way down That's the boardwalk right. and they paid to get in. I didn't know it at that time. It came so fast at them and so much that they put the money in barrels, and suddenly the commission came in and said, we will shut you down if you don't count the money. They had that money sticking out of barrels everywhere in, in a room. Finally, they brought in bank tellers from all over the state, and they counted it. And you know, when they were putting casinos in Jersey, I was living back east, and you read in the paper that the New Jersey State Gambling Commission was mm -hmm. considering applicants to make sure that they were financially responsible to operate a casino. And a bunch of us said, if you just give us one for a year, we'll be financially. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. But it doesn't work like no, that. I know. No, no. They said they investigate <laughs> your entire life. Yeah. I mean, I had investigators come out. They said, do you have a, uh, a uh, safety deposit box? I said, yeah. We'll go there now before you have a chance to go. I said, okay. And you open it up, you know, and there's some early pictures of me. But um, there was nothing of it. Any. But then they also said to the hotel, which I thought was brilliant, has he ever comped anybody at the hotel? Can we see his comp list? Uh -huh. Smart. Very smart, yeah. And you sign away, they can go anywhere in your life and investigate you. When you pass, you pass. Bless you, brother. <laughs> uh, Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy. Yeah. Is it true that you make up, like, the sayings for Wheel of Fortune? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, every, well, every one of them or just... No, no, not every one of them. They send over, like, a skeleton sheet of, of puzzles they're suggesting. Yeah. And I go through and cross them out and put in the tough ones, you know, with things that have an X and a Q or an R-H, yeah. and a P-S-Y, or, you know, something. 
and I'll do the tough puzzles in there so that it doesn't become a stagnant. Gotcha. But uh, I, I have a continuing interest. I'm still an executive producer, and I have a, an interest still in them, and I watch them, and uh, and, and I, I love them. That the other day uh, was it Maya Angelou, our friend. She mm -hmm. uh, or mm -hmm. was it she that complained that she saw very few black contestants? Yes, yeah, I, I think they're I think they accused us of being racist, which is very sad, because Maya. I mean, I found her shortly after she came back from Russia. She was doing Porgy and Bess in a in a, um, a musical company. And put her on my show for she's been here a couple twenty or thirty. I wish she had Charming called me woman. and said, "Merv, it's a racist show." But you see, the auditions are open to the public. Anybody can come, and if people don't come, what are we going to do? Or if they come and uh, isn't there like a pre-screening test? It's a tough test. Yeah. I, ca I tried to pass it. I couldn't. I flunked it, and I invented the game. <laughs> <laughs> you know that is going to be embarrassing. <laughs> I've been in the game, yeah. and I can't play it. I can't pass it. I can't pass it. It's very tough, but that's, that's theater. That's exactly you know, And Maya knows about theater. That's what makes me so sad about it. Why didn't she call me and say, hey, Murph, come on. That show looks racist there, you know? It's tough. It's tough. You can't be all things to all people, and we want everybody to come on the show, and we'd love everybody to win. And on the other hand, there's Wheel of Fortune, which we also produce, and there's certainly not any kind of problem there at all. No. Everybody's on there. No. So, try out. Come yeah. and try out. Now, did you make Pat Sajak fix his hair different? No, uh, isn't that funny? People keep telling me that. You know, we sit, we watch these shows sometimes. I think he changed it. hair dryers. You know, the uh, blowers. <laughs> I think he's doing it with his left hand now. Uh, no, he looks good now. Well, he looks fine. Oh, it's just that we're, we're used to seeing Pat. Well, we love him, too. Isn't he great? Yeah. He's fabulous. Yeah. yeah. Every time but I... But so are we. What yeah, the heck? I know. I mean, I mean, every time I see Pat, I just... Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be right, Ooh, right, right back with Merv Griffin of TV and all kinds of stuff and you on the toll-free after these <laughs> messages. <laughs> they uh, arrested Adolf Hitler. Really? They got him, yeah. What's bad news? Uh, they, uh, he's going to be tried in Los Angeles. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Um... <laughs> By the way, wouldn't that be the case? Huh? <laughs> Here's Brenda on the toll-free in Orlando, Florida. Hello there. Hi. Hi. I wanted to uh, ask Merv, and I wanted to say that at first that I missed, I grew up watching his show. Hey, that's a very nice. Thank you. And, um, you know, and it's interesting to me the difference, and I want your comment on the difference between the talk shows that we have today and the ones we had when you were around, like the wow. Merv Griffin show, the Mike Douglas show. Yeah. The way Phil Dinah. used to be. Yes, Dinah. Yep. All of that. Well, uh, those were entertainment shows. They were conversation with entertainment, newcomers, uh, finding new people. And uh, it was a Jack Parr genre, really. Yeah, uh, but more talk. that there wasn't controversy because, Brenda, I don't know if you remember, but Merv and Johnny used to tease you about this. Merv yeah. doing another one of his theme shows. Yeah. But you, you did a lot of theme shows that had to do with, uh, with tough subjects, with, 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 with abortion and with but we, sexuality. We, covered them very responsibly, right. we felt, with therapists mm -hmm. and, and, and the kind of people. Uh, I was the one who started those thematic shows, and I, but then I saw what was coming, and I, I got out. I didn't want to hang When you hang say you around. saw what was coming, how Well, far? because uh, shows were starting, and, and it was going to that tabloid mentality. And I, I, don't th I really don't think it is good. I, <laughs> for a change, I agree with the government. <laughs> you know, yeah, I don't believe in censoring or anything, but I do believe in uh, in broadcasting responsibility that they're putting on a lot of, and I think it's very bad for a number of ethnic groups that they're being ex exploited like this and, and treated like, you know, idiots and stuff. Idiots, yeah. Uh, I, I, we had chance, I mean, I had a chance that we could put on 20 Lithuanian proctologists who wanted to be nuns, but that was not interesting to me. Right. Uh, that was fringe area stuff. I like the mainstream. There's mm -hmm. too much interesting right. stuff and uplifting. I like uplifting mm -hmm. stuff when I turn. You know, I don't want to. You know, uh, w w um, what was his name? The, the great artist Campbell Soup, uh, and I used to have him on the Warhol. show. Warhol. Uh, yeah, uh, Andy Warhol was the one who said, "Yeah, everybody would be famous for 15 minutes," but he didn't say they were going to cry. You know, you tune in the audience. Woo! I don't want to hear all that. You know, mm -hmm. love to cry about at home. Brenda, we're glad you called. And Brenda's coming out of the box down there. That's why I keep looking That's down okay, there. but she's right there. She's right there. <laughs> no, she's not. She's right there. Her voice is there, but her eyes are here. Oh, we, yeah. we, I'm we, talking we, the box down. And Brenda, how's Orlando? <laughs> oh, it's fine. The weather's beautiful. What a city that is. This time of year. It's not too hot, not too cool. Woo! 
It's nice. I like it. You uh, should come and visit more. I'm often. there all the time. Disney World, you know, a Wheel of Fortune tapes there. And so right. I get down there a lot. I like it. You should bring more shows here, Merv. Our production community. You don't mind needs if we, we do, you don't mind if we keep a couple here in Los Angeles. Yeah, and I don't know. have any no, more. No, I do mind. <laughs> I do mind. <laughs> Geez, I'll, I'll bring David Letterman down, but uh, uh, hey, you, I don't own the show. <laughs> <laughs> you will leave him right where he is. Yeah, stay there, David. Uh, I'm still talking to Buck. Stay there, David. Good night, Brenda. <laughs> no, no, no. We would love for David Letterman to come. Put, us, put in a good word, Tom. We yeah, for, yeah, from your mouth to Paul Schaefer's ear, Brenda. Thank He'd be you. great with Mickey Mouse and Minnie. <laughs> leave <laughs> running into the studio. Yeah, right. okay. Brenda, well, thanks for calling. Have a great time. You're welcome. Goodbye now. Thank you. <laughs> when have things gone wrong on your show like you had a fellow who works with us now phil wilson phil wilson's here yeah, yeah and the, w w when the tiger got out phil uh well, that was um you know uh secret Roy. i had them on i was i used to do my show i did it for 11 years eight weeks a year from season palace from the main stage there and we broadcast live or not live no no no. we were taped but uh they brought over some of their bengal tigers and one of them was about 800 pounds and as they finished down their act he escaped and we had a ramp the people sat on either side of mostly ladies were right there i remember know? that sure. yeah and I, I would come out and the bengal tiger got loose and he came out on the platform with me and lay down on my foot you don't there's not even come around. but his head was six inches from people sitting there and i and i'm talking the whole time the whole band got up and they ran off the stage and got in the audience left with you the studio. no no the audience didn't move no. i mean there were 1400 people and i'm talking the whole time Sweat running down. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is a tame 800 pound. <laughs> I didn't believe it. They didn't either. I said, and I, I, we're not going to fuss. They, he'll, he'll be easily caught. Couldn't catch him. Couldn't catch him at all. And but the women did a very interesting thing. Every woman on the thing grabbed her purse. Why was he going to go through their purses? <laughs> they took their purses away. But uh, he sat there on my foot. Now he got Phil before he got to me. He grabbed Phil and he had Phil's leg in his mouth. And then he just started to roll over. Well, the Phil had to roll oh, with him. Man, sure. And there's crazy Phil with the Bengal tiger. And we, it oh, looked terrible man. in the audience. They oh, thought it was a man. man. Now, you say you were on tape, but you, you, you rarely stopped. You did it as well. Oh, I didn't like stopping tape. No, I said, if the set falls down, we just, just keep going. It's like the day the cow did the bad thing, you know, oh, I'm oh, right yeah, in the middle yeah, of the stage. Yeah. But every union said, you know, we had six unions on the stage. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm my, my union. <laughs> <laughs> I'm electrical. <laughs> well, plug into that, buddy. And, you know, you're sitting two feet from it, and, you know, and the audience is here, and they're going... <laughs> and my sinuses are draining out, you know. And so I said, to get a blanket or something. And we put a blanket. You put a blanket over it and do the show. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Not my union. <laughs> With what, leave showbiz? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With Merv at 800-952-2788, back after this. <laughs> <laughs> Vicki on the toll-free in Toronto, Ontario. Hello, and welcome to CBS. Hi, Tom. Good nice evening, to talk Vicky. to you again. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask Merv, how many people did you audition before you chose Alex Trebek as the host of Jeopardy? A number of us have wondered that, Vicki. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, we auditioned nobody because Alex obviously is a great host and had a long history of hosting shows. He was on High Rollers and uh, a few others. He had, and obviously shows in Canada, and uh, he just fit the package. And when it's right, you don't audition anybody. He didn't audition Pat Sage. Of course not. He was the weatherman out here for NBC, and uh -huh. he was charming. So uh, really the only person e that ever auditioned was Vanna. And uh, she was, uh, uh, who was the, uh, you know, I know the answer. Susan Stafford. I, I know that. She yeah. was married at one time to Gordon McClendon. Yeah. By the way, the, when you mentioned that you combined your Griffin Group radio stations with the Liberty Broadcasting mm -hmm. Group, that isn't the same Liberty Broadcasting that Gordon McClendon used to own out of Dallas, Texas, is it? I don't think so. Oh, okay. They're all Eastern stations. Oh, okay. No, then it's not. No, no. But we, we were trying to think of the first host of Wheel of Fortune, and I know his name, but I can't. I, Chuck Willery. Exactly right. Yeah. But then you got... Uh, he was married to Joanne Flug. At the right. Time. But then didn't Rolf Bernert... Bernish, Bernish? No, Rolf Bernish, he did the daytime show. I thought he was wonderful. Yeah. The, the, and you know who the, else But, but we got to tell who he is. He's a football guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Great, great. Yeah. Uh, played for the Padres. Yeah. Uh, and the great host of Wheel was a guy that auditioned and nobody ever saw his tape. And they called me from every news sports department in the world to see the tape and I wouldn't show it to anybody. Jimmy Connors. Really? Yeah. But NBC had other ideas for him. 
And so uh, Brandon Tartikoff said, no, he can't do it. But he was great, huh? Oh, because he knew the show and he loved it and he just walked out. And he was used to, obviously, bigger well, crowds. You, and... Why won't you show it to anybody? Well, Jimmy didn't want to at the time oh. either and stuff. But, he well, but would he now? I mean, could we I, get I, some? I suppose. It'd be fun if you'd come sometime we could show it. Every, yeah, yeah, he was really... And it was the peak of his tennis career. Yeah, yeah. His championship, you know. Yeah. Number one, and he wanted to do it. It was good. Yeah. It was good. Anyway, Vicky, there's the information you're looking hey, for. Hey, Vicky, hi. Oh, Vicky, hi. Hi. I'd just like uh, to add that uh, Jeopardy is one of my all-time favorite shows. I play along with it every night. Well, I'm not crazy about the wheel. I'm going to Canada. I'm what? going this Saturday. Oh, where? David Forster it has a foundation up there because he's Canadian. It's oh, in yeah. Victoria. And uh, uh, Johnny cool. Mathis, Patty LaBelle, uh, Marty Brill... A whole bunch of us are going up there, and they're going to recreate the Merv Griffin Show for one night, not on television, just live. Oh, and if it works, good. next year they're going to do celebrity bowling. Really good. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Mer Merv, you should do more Celebrity Jeopardy. Yeah, and I like please, those. Please try to coax Tom to go on. Yeah, but nobody, we, it's a very, very tough celebrity. It's tough. Don't want to go no, on. No, I didn't want to go on. Set. Bill, <laughs> by the way, Vicky, Bill Maher was here last night. You yeah. know, from political I know, and, I and, and he said, but yeah, I he, watched him on his... It's a lot easier to play sitting at home than it is standing behind that oh, podium in the oh, studio. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's tough yeah. there. Listen, Vicky, the, the time is moving on, but okay. thanks for calling and have a happy Yeah, thanks, life. Vicky. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye bye now. So what's the uh, Charles de Gaulle story? Oh, Richard Gully, who uh, I think he's a cousin of... What's a cousin of Anthony Eden, wrote it in a... In a uh, and, and very wired in. When Charles de Gaulle, and you remember, I mean, he was such a French hero and, yeah, and, and very, very, erect, very nationalistic, yeah. very erect, and he wore that little hat and everything. He, uh, whenever he'd go to parties or anything away from France, he always spoke in French, even though he spoke perfect English. His wife studied English. She wanted to speak English. The Queen of England, uh, Elizabeth II, honored him at a big party, thank him for everything they had done for the English. And, and uh, he came with his wife, and there he was there with his uniform and everything on. They sat there, and the toast started, and they toasted, and he toasted in French. And then suddenly his wife rose, and she said, I would like very much to toast this great lady, the Queen of England. So you raise her glass, and we will toast to her penis. <laughs> the queen froze, obviously. So nobody knew what to do, and General Gaulle jumped up and said, Happiness! Happiness! <laughs> <laughs> Never made that connection, did you? <laughs> Happiness! I have laughed over that story. Richard Gully writes for 213 now, and I want to tell you, I've screamed over that. Happiness! <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. We got it. We got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got it. <laughs> Now, you got your, your New Year's Eve special's coming up uh, in the yeah, yeah. station, right? From, From back to work. Yep. Uh, everybody dances. I lead the band. Tony Bennett again this year. He's done it every year with me. He sings. Everybody, thousands of people dance. That's wonderful. And uh, Harry Dolapani. Wonderful. Trisha Yearwood and the New York Voices. Jack Sheldon. And I conduct the band. Mort Lindsay. And people attempt to dance to my rhythms. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet they do pretty good. Yeah. Of all the people. Yeah. What kinds of people were your favorites on the shows that you've done? Well, I, I really enjoyed, you know, it's very strange category. What, what do you call yourself? Uh, the Are you a star? No, I'm the announcer. No, you're not No, a I'm, the, I'm the host. I'm the uh, uh, Don't you really call it like I do? You call yourself, uh, you're a broadcaster. Yeah, broadcaster. Yeah, I mean you're the star of the show, but, yeah, but you are a, like, a broadcaster. Like, like when I went you to can do it the all. other day, I filled out the medical uh, occupation broadcast. Broadcaster. Yeah. Yeah. Is that two S's or no one? Uh, one, one, one S. And could that be good for Wheel of Fortune? Uh, broadcaster. Very good. That could save a lot of money. There's no quitting this. Anyway, uh, what did you ask me? About the types of people that are your favorites. That I like the writers. Yeah. One of my most memorable shows was, was with a, a Jimmy Michener, James Michener, who I just talked to. Oh, man. He's in See, Texas. I lived in Philly. I worked for Westinghouse when you were doing the show for Westinghouse. Oh, we used to have Merriman Smith on all, and Michener would come in from, was it New Hope he lived, you yeah. know? Yeah. And he would tell the stories. Of lived one. in San Antonio, Texas. Oh. I talked to him the other day. Oh, we gotta get, we, we okay. should get him in here. Oh, Michener yeah. and Jimmy Jones, James Jones, who, yep. uh, you know, was expatriate lived. He gave me my first party in Paris, he and Gloria on the Ile Saint Louis. And uh, Erwin Shaw was there, and Robert Nathan, and the four of them. It was the most amazing, I've never forgotten it. Uh, writers were a great category. Mm -hmm. Like Mr. 
personality there. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'll tell you another great category, kid, is broadcasters. I love talking to people such as yourself. And, oh, oh uh, well, but who've been uh, hanging around for a lot of years. Yeah, but, but I'll tell you something. Uh, Age is wonderful, too, because you know everything. The thing that's... The thing that's uh, I, I remember from the Woody Allen picture, and I know it's late here. I'll move on in a second. Mm -hmm. though. Remember Radio Days, the oh, Allen yeah. picture? <laughs> And at the end, when he said, you know, those voices are growing fewer every day. Oh, yeah. And I, I just think it's important that, we, that, that the young people, God love them, who watch this show, know something about what all of us have been through in this yeah. business and how great it is and how wonderful and what the magic, that, what the potential for this thing is. Oh, I want to get back in it. I'm so excited. Oh, stop it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas to Merry you, my Christmas friend. To you. And Happy New Year. Wonderful and, holiday. And, yeah. and to you, too. And thanks right. for your kindness to us. And you know that we, we think the world of you here. Thank and, you. And you're always welcome. And I hope you'll come back. You're just... Oh, you're so... <laughs> I keep forgetting that. And my tombstone will say, I will not be right back. No, uh, by the way, do you want to do Monday nights here? We will... <laughs> Opposite <laughs> football? No, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, no. Next, Robert Ballard, and we uh, finding the, uh, the Lusitania, oh, huh? What a story. He's been poking around in the ocean. Has he ever. Yeah. Back with Robert...